Welcome back to Econ 103 Introduction to Microeconomics. In today's uh, video, we're going to be taking a look at just a brief overview of how to compute price, quantity exchange, surplus analysis, all of that underneath a price floor. So the expectation in this is that you've already watched the video on price floors, that is the price control video, so you have a good understanding, a good idea as to what's going on in all of those parts. And then this is just kind of the walkthrough, the application bit to make sure that, hey, you know what you're doing and how to actually apply the problem. So let's jump over, let's take a look at this and uh, let's start uh, solving our situation. Let's take a look at the following equations. So keep in mind, this is often how the equations will be presented to you. And what you have to be able to infer from the equation is which one of these is our supply equation and which one is our demand equation. Now, again, one thing to keep in mind with this is our whole law of supply, law of demand. Law of demand states that price, let's quickly write this down, price and quantity are inversely related. That is, if price goes up, my quantity demanded will go down. Conversely, our law of supply says that price and quantity are positively related. So again, to demonstrate that, if price goes up, quantity goes up. So just taking a look at our equations as they stand, here, the first equation, we see that we have negative 2q. That is, in this case here, every time q gets bigger, well, we're getting a bigger and bigger negative, we're going to be getting a smaller and smaller price. So that is, in this case here, our P and our Q are inversely related. To start off, we have our demand. By default, then, the next one has to be the supply. But again, to visualize why that's the case, we have our positive 3 in that scenario. So, hey, every time we get an extra Q, we get an extra plus 3 price. So positively related, thus we have our supply. So a good place to kind of start off making sure we know which equation is which. From here, the next thing I like to do is just to be able to visualize my market. So that is, I want to just quickly draw the graph as to what I'm evaluating. So start off with my axes, fully labeling them. The vertical one is our price. The horizontal one, that is our quantity. We then have our curves. Let's start off with our demand curve. We are going to have negative slope there. Uh, let's change up the colors a little bit. Let's make this a little bit more exciting. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, so we have our downward sloping demand curve. Keeping in mind, okay, this 110, that is our vertical intercept. So that's 110. And then we're decreasing at a slope of 2. So our little trick to find our horizontal intercept is just to take this 110 and divide by the magnitude of the slope. So 110 divided by 2, that's going to yield for me 55. Okay, so we have our demand put in. Not so bad. From here, next thing we want to take a look at, of course, is our supply. So let's go and do that. Let's change colors again, because why not? Supply is starting at 10. So, okay, let's say something like that there. That's 10. And the slope is relatively steeper than the supply, right? We're looking at a slope of 3 versus a slope of 2. Not significantly steep, steeper, but but a bit. Again, that's our intercept there of 10. And fully labeling our curves, this is our supply. This guy here, that one's our demand curve. Okay, first thing we need to calculate is our equilibrium price and quantity. So to calculate our equilibrium price and quantity, what we're going to do is realize that, hey, right at this point here, we have intersection of both the supply and the demand curve. And at that point, and only at that point, let's do that a little bit better here. There we go. We have some quantity and some price such that this quantity and this price are going to be the same on both of these lines. So, okay, in order to do that, really what I'm going to do is just set these two equations equal to each other. I'm just going to go price. Oh, it helps if I use the right tool. Let's try that again. Price equals price. And really that's saying, hey, price demand equals price from the supply curve. Okay, we see that, hey, price actually equals some equation. So let's put that in. We have 110 minus 
2q equals 10 plus 3q. And from here, we just want to go through our algebraic voodoo. We want to get our q's together. So we want to consolidate and then we want to isolate. So as you've seen probably going through these videos, I don't like these negatives. So I like to get rid of these guys first. So I have this negative 2q. I'm going to add 2q to both sides. So as I do that, I get 110 on the left hand and then 10 and that guy becomes 5q. That's the 3 plus the 2 that I've added over. Okay, I've now consolidated my Q. I now want to isolate it. So I want to get this 10 over to the other side. So subtracting 10 from both sides, I have 100 equals 5Q. And to continue to isolate the Q, I got now divide both sides by 5. So I have 20 equal to Q. And that there, that is my equilibrium. That is 20 as I have it right there. From here, how can we get our equilibrium price? Well, to get our equilibrium price, what we need to do is we need to take our quantity and recognize, hey, as I take that quantity, if I put it up into the curve, I'm going to get a price. And keep in mind that at 20, it doesn't matter whether I put it into that supply or the demand function because they should both be one and the same price at that point. In fact, that's a good check. Put 20 into both of them, and if you get different answers, uh -huh, you've made a mistake. In this case, we are good. So let's just use our supply function because why not? And we'll go price equals 10 plus 3Q. Okay, well, we know what Q is. We, or at least we want to know what the price when Q is 20. So we'll put in a Q of 20. And we get price equals 10 plus 60. Or we get a price of 70. So there we go. We get price of 70 there. And quick check that you can do just to make sure that, hey, we did do this right. Go ahead and put in a Q of 20 into our demand equation and make sure we get the same value there. Okay, great. We have our initial setup. We have our initial equilibrium. What we're ultimately going to be looking at as we go through this video is we're going to be taking a look at how do I figure out my quantity exchange underneath the price floor, and then we're going to conduct a surplus analysis. That is, we're going to be taking a look at consumer surplus, producer surplus, social surplus, and we want to see how these have changed underneath the policy. That is, do we have winners? Do we have losers? How's everybody doing once we put in the price floor? So in that sense there, well, let's just get rid of all this work that I've done just to kind of clear up the space a little bit. And let's take a look at our initial starting conditions. So that is our initial consumer, producer, and social surplus. Okay. Starting off with our consumer surplus, let's remind ourselves as to what exactly that is. Well, our consumer surplus is everything below the price that I'm willing to pay. So keep in mind, our demand curve is our willingness to pay curve. So below the price that I was willing to pay, above the price that I actually have to pay, up until my quantity exchanged. So in this case here, I'm going to get this whole triangle as my consumer surplus. So, okay, triangle. We can figure out the area of a triangle. That's just basic geometry. That's going to be one half base times height. So one half base. Well, we're going to have a base of 20 times height. And I have a height of 110 minus 70. 110 minus 70, that gives me 40. So I get one half times 20 times 40. That's going to give me 400 altogether. And these are dollars. These are dollars. So $400 worth of consumer surplus. What about, what about the producer? Well, producer is kind of the same idea. We want to look above our willingness to accept. Keep in mind that supply curve is also our willingness to accept curve. So above our willingness to accept, below the price we do accept. And again, up until our quantity exchanged. So again, we just get a triangle in this sense here, shade that in, and we can work that one out as, again, just a triangle. So one half base, so we have the same base here, base of 20. 
Then height, well in this case our height is from 70 down to 10, so we have a height of 60. That is 70 minus 10 is 60, so 1 half times 20 times 60, that's going to yield for us $600 worth of producer surplus. Okay, social surplus, and that's just adding up all of the players in this scenario and figuring out what is the total surplus earned by everybody who is participating. In this case, we only have the consumer and the producer participating. They account for the entirety of society. So we can find the social surplus just by adding up the consumer and the producer. And we get 1,000 in this case here. Alternatively, we could also calculate the social surplus as the total surplus here. So the difference between our willingness to pay, our willingness to accept up until our quantity exchanged. And we could find out the area of this big triangle. And that would be similarly our social surplus should give us again that 1000 altogether. Okay, so we have our initial surplus situation. We have our initial welfare and ideas to what's going on. Let's go now and impose our price floor. And with the price floor imposed, let's figure out what is our corresponding quantity exchanged. And then we'll rework our surplus given that. So let's quickly just clean up this diagram, get rid of our shaded in surplus bits, and then we will go ahead and start working. Okay, so with a price floor, keep in mind that what we're looking at here is a minimum price. This is the minimum allowable price that's allowed to be charged in the market. So we actually have two scenarios that are possible here. And let's take a look quickly at these two scenarios before we go through and calculating. First scenario, keep in mind, the market wants to charge a price of 70. First scenario is that we set a price floor down here. Let's say this is something like 60. Well, in this scenario, Government says, hey, the minimum price that you can charge for this good or service is $60. Well, the market wants to charge 70, so there's no effect. This has no impact on the market whatsoever. Our quantity exchange would still be 20. Our, price, our market clearing price, that would still be 70. So this here, this would be our example of a non-binding price floor because the market's not bound by it. We could also have the opposite case. We could also look at a scenario where minimum price, like we have here, of price of 80. So, okay, let's try to get that roughly to scale. There we go. And this here, this will be our price floor. And that's going to be at a price of 80. Well, okay, in this scenario, it's a mandated minimum price. And the market actually wants to charge lower than that. The market wants to charge a price of 70. Well, now we have a problem. We're saying the lowest legally you can charge is 80, market wants to charge 70, price floor, the law is going to win in this case here. So what we end up getting is we get a disequilibrium. If we take 80 to our demand curve, draw that down, we're going to get our quantity demanded. Similarly, if we take this 80 all the way over to our supply curve, draw that one down, we're going to get our quantity supplied. Now keep in mind, anytime we have a disequilibrium situation like this, it is going to be typically the minimum of the two that becomes our quantity exchanged. And so in this case here, it doesn't matter that producers are producing QS because we're only wanting to buy QD. So what we need to do to carry forward in this is we need to conduct our new surplus analysis, consumer, producer, social, and we need to figure out who are our winners and who are the losers. What we can do as well is we can calculate what is our quantity demanded, we can calculate what is our quantity supplied, and in that we can determine how much excess supply we are facing. That is how much are we overproducing because of this price floor. And right, keep in mind, this is just being overproduced. It has to be put either into storage for a later date or depending on the good, this just goes to waste. It just becomes waste. So let's start off. Let's start off by figuring out what are these values of QD and QS. 
And the big giveaway here is that this is quantity demand. So hey, let's start with that one. And what do we do to start with it? Let's just invoke our demand equation. So we're going to have price equals 110 minus 2q. Keep in mind, this is our demand, so this is 2 quantity demanded. I just don't want to notate it there every time for qd. So we'll just keep it as q. Now, I have two unknowns. I have price and quantity. But keep in mind, I don't actually have two unknowns because I'm interested in what is happening at a price of 80. So let's put in that new price. Price is 80, and I'm going to get 110 minus 2q. So hey, I just have 1q alone there. Let's go through our algebra. Let's, well, we don't have anything to consolidate, so let's just isolate. Again, I don't like my negative, so I'm going to instantly move that negative 2q over to the other side to make it a positive. So I'll get 80 plus 2q equals 110. Now we need to isolate, so let's get rid of that 80. We'll have 2q equals 110 minus 80. And then 110 minus 80, let's simplify that a little bit. That gives us 30. So we have 2q equals 30. Again, continuing to isolate, divide both sides by 2. Q equals 15. And so, hey, keep in mind, we just went through a whole bunch of math. What was this math for again? Well, this math was for, we had our demand equation, and we solved for our quantity demanded. So let's update our graph here. Let's update our graph a little bit. Uh, let's make that guy disappear. And let's say that we have our updated quantity demanded of 15. Great. We can do the same thing now in order to get our quantity supplied. So let's go through and do that. Uh, let's make some room so we actually have some room to work here. And in order to calculate this quantity supplied, we need to similarly invoke our supply equation. So price equals 10 plus 3q. And again, two unknowns, but we're interested in, hey, what is q when price is 80? So we make that substitution. And in this case, I don't have any negatives that I'm concerned about, so I'm just good to leave it as it is. So from here, I'm going to go minus 10, right? Minus 10 from both sides. I want to isolate my q. So I get 70 equals 3q. Continue to isolate, divide both sides by 3. So 70 divided by 3 gives me 23.33 repeating. That gives me my value of Q. Again, let's just update our graph here. And I have 23.33 repeating as my quantity supplied. Similarly, now I can work out my excess supply, that is how much extra altogether I was, and that's just, hey, how much I'm producing extra versus how much I'm actually consuming, my quantity demanded, and so I get, now what does that work out to? 8.33 units of excess supply, just the extra stuff I'm producing that either has to go into storage or will just rot and decay. Well, let's clean up again, and then what we want to do is we want to take a look at our welfare analysis, so our updated consumer producer social surplus. Okay, so in the first scenario, we identified our consumer, producer, and social surplus just by shading in the corresponding areas. We could do that again, but I kind of want to just spice it up and take a look at another way that we can denote these areas to work it out. And that is, let's just give them each a name. So each of these geometric shapes, I'm just going to call a value, A, B, C. Uh, here, I have this weird shape. Instead of just saying, hey, this weird shape is going to be called D, what I want to do is I'm going to give this a little break. I'm going to go right here across, something like that. And then now I'm going to call that D, E, and F. And why would I, why would I do that? Ah, we'll see that that actually is going to make our lives a lot easier in just a few steps here. So making that, instead of have this weird trapezoidal shape, I now have a rectangle for D and a triangle for F. And just like we could solve area of a triangle here, all of these shapes are now either a triangle or a rectangle, meaning they're quite easy geometrically in order to find the area up. Okay, so let's go and let's work out our updated 
consumer surplus, producer surplus, and social surplus, where I'm using yeah, a new color to denote the new surplus under the price floor, and also this little subscript one to denote that it's my new one. Okay, so starting off with my consumer surplus, uh, let's just use the shading anyways, just to really drive the point home. So again, we're looking for the area underneath our willingness to pay above the price that we do pay. So right in this case here, willingness to pay, that's my demand curve above the price I do pay. We see that that is just the geometric shape of A. So we can solve that. Again, that's just a triangle. So one half base. Well, keep in mind in this case, my base is only 15 now because my quantity exchanged fell. So one half base times height. My height is going to be 110 minus 80. So that's going to be a height of 30. In this case here, I'm going to get one half 15 times 30. That's going to be a new consumer surplus of 225. Okay. Producer surplus. Let's go jump and take a look at that. So for the producer surplus, same idea. It's above my willingness to accept all the way to the price that I do accept. Again, only up until the quantity we actually exchange. And so what we get is we get this weird shape here, which we have labeled as B, D, and F. So we have B, D, and F as this new weird trapezoidal shape. But hey, this is where we kind of have our benefit where we drew that line, because if we take a look at this, well, our producer surplus is actually just this. I'm gonna to try to draw, oh, there we go, that wasn't too bad. Our little rectangle, that was B and D. And then we have this triangle of F. And so if we find out the area of these two shapes separately, we can then add them together and get our total producer surplus. So let's start off with B and D. So B and D, that's just base times height, right? Area of a rectangle. So in this case here, base, that is gonna be, again, 15 times the height of the rectangle. Well, that's gonna be from 80 down to, oh, look at that. We don't have this value. Seems like we're stuck, we're hooped, we don't have the value we need in order to figure out our height. Well, that's not the case, right? We can actually figure this out quite easily. Keeping in mind, I have a quantity that's going up to my supply curve and then across. That is, hey, at 15 to my supply, if I find this corresponding value, this is just my willingness to accept to produce 15 units. So, quantity to supply to get price, we just need to invoke our supply equation. So let's quickly do that. Price equals 10 plus 3Q. Well, my Q is 15. There we go. Okay, price equals 10 plus, that's 45. So price equals 55. So hey, that wasn't too bad. Let's just clean that up so I can write that in nicely. We're going to have 55 as that value there, as my willingness to accept for 15 units. Okay, so now I get my height. 80 minus 55, well 80 minus 55, that's going to give me 25. Awesome. Now I want a plus area of this triangle, well that triangle that was just F there. So base, well sorry, one half. Base is still again 15, and now I have a height of 10 to 55. Right, 10 all the way to 55. So that gives me 45 as my height. Okay, let's work these out. So to start off, 15 times 25, that's going to be 375 plus one half base of 15 times a height of 45. That's going to give me 337.5. Add the two together to get the total area there for my producer surplus, and I get 337.5 plus 375. And all together, I get an area of 712 and 50 cents. Great.
So just a quick comparison, we see that in relation to our initial consumer surplus, our consumers are doing much worse. They've lost, uh, what is that, $175 worth of surplus. In relation to our initial producer surplus, our producers have won. They have gained $112.50 worth of surplus. But what about society altogether? Well, keeping in mind, because these are our only two players, our societal surplus, social surplus, is just going to be the sum of the two. So $712.50 plus $225 gives me $937.50 as social surplus. So we see in this case as well, $1,000. To 937.50. Well, we have a loss there for our for our society as well. How large of a loss is this? Well, we have a special name for that. The loss to society, that loss in social surplus, we call our dead weight loss. And that is just going to be the difference in our social surpluses, the thousand minus the 937. And we see in this case here we have lost 62. 50. Graphically, where does this 6250 show up? Well, graphically, that's area C and E there. Let's, uh, let's just quickly shade that in to demonstrate. Little brown area here. That is our dead weight loss to society. That's what we lose out on because of this new price floor that was imposed. Our loss in surplus. Great. So through this video, what we've done is we've calculated equilibrium. We've calculated initial surplus. We've gone and we've calculated our quantity demanded, our quantity supplied. And then we've also gone through and we've calculated our willingness to accept given some quantity. That's where we got that 55 from based off of the quantity of 15. We then conducted our surplus analysis, our social surplus before, our social surplus after, and we've identified winners and losers. Again, consumers, society, they have lost. Producers, producers have won. Thanks for watching. If you do have any other questions stemming from this, please feel free to comment below or, of course, post on the frequently asked questions in D2L and feel free to send me an email. Thanks.